Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Hashtag AskJSM, the weekly Monday mailbag video where I answer your questions from Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube right here in this video forum. So without further ado, we are less than 24 hours removed from the WWE Night of Champions pay-per-view event. A lot of questions regarding the show, and with that being said, let's move right along to this week's set of questions. Coming in first from Jose C. from YouTube, his question was, With how the year is going so far, who do you think will win the Money in the Bank and Royal Rumble matches? Anything can change within the matter of of not even months, but within weeks. Had you told me at this point last year that Batista would be coming back to win the 2014 Royal Rumble, I would have called you crazy because I did not see that happening whatsoever. It wasn't basically confirmed that Batista was coming back to WWE until December. And even then, a lot of people didn't think that he would win the Rumble because we didn't think that WWE would be stupid enough to do that, and they did. But nevertheless, um, as it stands right now, and this is taking into into account the injuries of Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan and their timetables for their returns. Um, obviously, right now, the two biggest candidates to win this year's Royal Rumble matchup are Roman Reigns, whether he's back before then or not, whether he returns at the show beforehand. Roman Reigns is everyone's first pick to win the matchup, myself included. I think it's the most logical course of action. I know Batista and John Cena in recent years were also very... Um, were very predictable choices to have to win the Rumble. I didn't think they were the right choices. Roman Reigns is a fresh face. You could use it. Um, so I think Roman Reigns is my number one pick right now. Daniel Bryan is very close to number two. Whether he comes back beforehand or at the show itself, Daniel Bryan, I can very well see winning the match and going on to WrestleMania to contend for the WWE title that he arguably never lost. He was only vacated of it due to injury. So Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan are my two biggest picks right now. Like I said before, though, anything can change between September now and January. Um, in terms of the Money in the Bank match, that's even a uh, harder matchup to predict who will win, considering now is September, and the Money in the Bank matchup is usually in June or July. So anything can happen. Some new star, Sami Zayn, could debut between now and then and win the matchup. Who freaking knows? Um, but taking a shot in the dark here, I'd be very surprised if Ambrose was not in the title picture by this point next year. But if he's not, I could see Ambrose winning the Money in the Bank ladder match, considering that he came close this year before Seth Rollins won it. Again, had you told me at this point a year ago that Seth Rollins would be Mr. Money in the Bank in September 2014, I would not have believed you whatsoever. If anything, I would have said Roman Reigns or Dean Ambrose of anyone of the Shield, not Seth Rollins. So, that being said, um, I can't really give you a straight answer. I'll have to go with Dean Ambrose, but anything can happen between now and the Money in the Bank pay-per-view next year. Maybe Cesaro? Who really knows, but... Um, I'll have to say maybe Dean Ambrose or Cesaro for the Money in the Bank and Roman Reigns or Daniel Bryan for the 2015 Royal Rumble winner. Up next, Justin G, a very lengthy question he posted on the Facebook page. On the timeline, he asked, The Undertaker went down with a groin injury in, the late, in late 1999. Do you think that the Ministry Undertaker could have carried on throughout the late, I'm sorry, throughout the early 2000s and on? And do you think that the Ministry joining forces with the corporation hurt the Undertaker as he was pretty much the second guy compared to the redevelopment of Triple H. So, a lot of things to address here in the question. Like I said before, a little pre-screening here before I answered the question. I was not a fan, of course, during the Attitude Era. This is only being answered by someone who is looking back, who has watched WWE thoroughly, the, the annals of history and stuff like that. So, this is not knowing from experience, watching at the time and stuff like that. So, just keep that in mind while I answer this question. Um, but here we go. Your first part of your question, do I think that the Ministry Undertaker could have carried on through the early 2000s? I don't think so. I think it was getting around that time. I mean, even in 1999, it was kind of pushing it with The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin and all the raunchy stuff that they were doing during the Attitude Era. Um, I don't think it would have lasted. And uh, him coming back as the biker, as the American badass Undertaker. And I think it might have been you or someone else who asked me if I could have seen that going on into the 2004 and onward, and I said no, because I think it was time for the gimmick to change, go back to what got him over in the first place in the early 1990s. It was a changing of the times. The Attitude Era was done. Biker Undertaker had ran its course, and I think the same thing could be said for the Ministry Undertaker as well. I think the Biker Undertaker kind of breaking that fourth wall, getting an inside look on the Undertaker as a person who he kind of really is in real life. Um, it was time for that to happen in the early 2000s around the time of the Attitude Era. Um, and to answer your second question, do I think that joining up with the corporation, the ministry, had hurt the Undertaker in the long run because he was second to he was second fiddle to Triple H or the re redevelopment of Triple H, as you said in your question? Um, maybe a little bit. Obviously, he was not cast as a key figure, which is a bit strange considering that he was WWE champion in the early 1990s when he first debuted. Even early on in the Attitude Era when he captured the WWE Championship at WrestleMania. So for him to go from that to being cast as second fiddle to Triple H in the ministry, 
I wouldn't say it hurt him. I don't think he was being used to his full potential at the time. I mean, we say the Rock and Stone Cold are the faces of the Attitude Era. And Undertaker and Kane were, I mean, the early 1997, 1998, but when he joined up with the Ministry, which was a great faction, a great stable, um, I think Undertaker could have been used better. And yes, I do think that he was playing second fiddle to Triple H in that stable. But that being said, of course, it didn't hurt him in the long run, considering he's still one of the most legendary performers in the history of wrestling. So um, I don't think it hurt him in the long run. He's still WWE Hall of Fame worthy. He wouldn't, he wasn't buried from that point forward or anything like that, or no pun intended. Um, but no, I don't think it hurt him in the long run, but for that short period of time, I do think that he could have been used better as rather than a second fiddle to Triple H. Um, second question, or the next question, I'm sorry, comes from Jared J from Facebook. His question was, will Roman Reigns' injury affect WWE's WrestleMania plans? Okay, so great question and something I really wanted to address, whether it be on Russell Rant Radio here on the show or an article or something. So Roman Reigns' past weekend, very shocking turn of developments. Um, with Roman Reigns coming down with an injury, suffering a hernia, it's really unclear as of right now as to how long he will be ba- as to how long he will be out of action. It could be anywhere from four to six weeks. He could be out for three, four months. It's really all up in the air right now. I would kind of go on the longer side, like with Daniel Bryan. Some people are saying, "Oh, he's old. He'll be back by Survivor Series." I know the dirt sheets are reporting that. I just don't have much. I don't have much faith and stock into what they're saying right now as far as he'll be back before Survivor Series. I don't see that as a possibility. If anything, I would like to see Daniel Bryan back. I'm a huge Daniel Bryan fan, but he should be 100%, much like Roman Reigns, so he should not come back any earlier than 100%. So with that being said, um, I posted a tweet after the news had broke about how this might affect the WrestleMania plans and how him missing so much time, if it is up for three to four months, how that could affect him contending for the WWE World WWE Championship against Brock Lesnar next to WrestleMania 31, as are the plans at stand right now. And a lot of people questioned that. They were thinking, well, it's easy. He went, he comes back, he wins the Royal Rumble, and then he goes on to win the WWE Championship. But I think here's something that I think a lot of people are overlooking. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just my stupid thinking here. But I'm saying that Roman Reigns, as it stands right now, and I know he contended for the WWE World Heavyweight title back in June of this year at Money in the Bank, back in Battleground, and he lost both of those matches, and I don't think he was ready to be featured in the title picture. Granted, he's the second biggest babyface in the company right now, or was, before he came down with the injury, because John Cena, aside from Cena, there's no real top babyface in the company, aside from Dean Ambrose. They really need to do a better job of grooming new talent to be featured at the top of the roster. Cesaro could have been one of those guys had they turned him babyface right after WrestleMania. They botched that, and that's in a whole other rant for another day, which I actually have done here on the show before, nevertheless. Um, but we move forward. Um, here, here's the thing. Roman Reigns, before he got injured, as of right now, he was featured in a good feed of Seth Rollins. I enjoyed it for what it was. He wasn't ready for title contention. In the next few months, people, Jim Ross himself, a lot of people were saying that the next few months, time would tell. Like, these next few months for Roman Reigns would serve as the development, him to get ready, for him to grow as a performer in the ring, on the mic. How can he grow if he's going to be out for three, three to four months? You know what I mean? That doesn't really make much sense to me, how he comes back. No different than he was before. Maybe he gets a new theme. Maybe he gets a new look. I understand that. But how is he going to grow as a performer in the ring on the mic if he's not on TV every single week? You know what I mean? I don't think as it stands right now before he got injured that he was ready. He was worthy of being a world champion. I think he will be a world champion by WrestleMania time. And I think the benefit of WrestleMania being six, seven, eight months away is that because it's so far away that all that time in the meantime could have served as him – could have worked to his benefit that it's more time for him to grow. And because he's going to be out, maybe he'll work on his mic skills when he's out with an injury, when he's recuperating, when when he's rehabilitating, and stuff like that. But I just don't see him being ready for title contention come WrestleMania if he's going to be missing so much time. And this is assuming that he'll be out to the Royal Rumble time. So I don't think him coming back and winning the Royal Rumble, yeah, it's going to get a big pop, but is he going to be ready for a main event of WrestleMania if he's going to be out for the last three to four months? Daniel Bryan or... I don't know. Daniel Bryan, had he gotten injured and came back and won the Rumble, like, he's a guy that's ready. We already know he's a main event performer. Roman Reigns, we know, isn't ready. You know what I mean? It just doesn't make much sense to me that a lot of people would think that he's going to come back, win the Rumble. It's going to be all handy-dandy. You know what I mean? I don't think that's the case at all. So I do think that this might affect the WrestleMania plans if he comes back a lot later than people expect, whether it be in January or February. I don't think that's going to be the case. But I'm just saying, worst-case scenario here, he comes back Around the Royal Rumble time, February, they might say, hey, I don't think Roman Reigns is ready for the main event of WrestleMania yet. Let's throw another top babyface in there instead. 
God forbid they throw John Cena in there. I hope that's not the case. Hopefully they just say maybe Dean Ambrose is more organically over, a lot more over than we thought he would be. Let's put him in a spot instead. WWE is very hesitant. They are very stubborn, I guess is the word I could use when it comes to that kind of stuff. Daniel Bryan was fucking over a year ago, and they still did not decide to put him in the Royal Rumble winning spot um, to have him go on to WrestleMania to win the title. And they did anyway, but that was after the whole fan movement. And I don't want anyone to say that they did that on purpose with Batista winning. That was not done on purpose because that was the plan the entire time, and it was very convoluted and very bullshit. So with that being said... Um, I don't think – I do actually think that it will affect WrestleMania plans. So they might have to throw Dean Ambrose in there instead or maybe another babyface rises up in the next couple of months. We'll have to wait and see. But um, I do think it might affect WrestleMania. To what extent, I'm not exactly sure. It really all depends on when Roman Reigns comes back, whether it be next month, whether it be in January. If he comes back too late, I could see them changing the main event. And Brock Lesnar might lose the title between now and then. I don't think they're stupid enough to do that. But it's always possible anything can happen in WWE. He came close to losing the title last night at uh, Night of Champions um, before Seth Rollins interfered. So with that being said, um, I do think it might affect the WrestleMania plans. To what extent? We'll have to wait and see. So next question comes from Andre G. What do you think is the best match Mr. McMahon has ever had? Three matches from what I've seen anyway. His matchup with Hulk Hogan, which I thought was a lot better than expected at WrestleMania 19. Very entertaining matchup, especially the interference from Roddy Piper. Was he in the best physical state of mind at the time? Probably not. Um, but him showing up regardless and knocking out Hulk Hogan and interfering on Mr. McMahon's behalf, I thought was tremendous. The crowd popped for it. Great shocker. Um, so that was a very entertaining matchup, a lot better than I thought it would be. Obviously, how can you leave out his matchup at WrestleMania 22 with Shawn Michaels in that no-holds-barred match? Put up a hell of a performance for a guy that is not an active in-ring competitor. And of course, third and finally, last but not least, his matchup with Shane McMahon, his son, at WrestleMania 17. I also thought that was a very entertaining outing with Mick Foley as his special guest referee. The whole thing with Linda staying there in a um, in that state where she was not moving, she was not saying anything, she wasn't speaking, she wasn't doing anything. And for her to come up and low blow Mr. McMahon, the crowd went crazy. I thought that was a great moment. I thought those are very entertaining matchups. So, from what I've seen, the best three Mr. McMahon matches, in my opinion, are the ones that he had with Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania. 20 or 19, I'm sorry, the one that he had with Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 22, and the one that he had with Shane McMahon at WrestleMania 17. So all WrestleMania outings for Mr. McMahon's best, where better than on the greatest stage of them all. So the next question, now on to the Twitter questions. At Jeremy8911, his question was, do you see Sami Zayn winning the NXT title at the next special and possibly debuting the night after WrestleMania? I kind of already answered this question last week, but it's kind of reworded differently. But nevertheless, um, I do see Sami Zayn winning the NXT Championship at the next live special. I'm hoping that Adrian Neville is the one to go heel. I mean, Babyface versus Babyface, Neville versus Zayn, it's a big money matchup if there ever was one in NXT. I know it's a, like a show on the WWE Network. You're not paying to see it per se, aside from paying the $9.99. But it is a big-time matchup, a big marquee matchup, I guess I should say. The biggest marquee matchup that NXT has ever had. So with that being said, um, if I, I'm fine with the Babyface, Babyface versus Babyface matchup in the main event of the, last, of the next live special. But if they had to turn somebody, it should be Adrian Neville. Sami Zayn, I think, is more over with the fans, has more of a connection with the audience than Adrian Neville, despite his extremely impressive moveset. But uh, that being said, regardless of who's babyface, who's heel, Sami Zayn must walk out the next special as NXT champion. I don't think he can prolong it any longer. I was fine with him losing at Arrival, at TakeOver, at TakeOver 2, but now is the time to capitalize the storyline must be completed with him winning the NXT title at the next live special. And yes, you said it yourself. A lot of people ask me, and I think it was the question I answered last week, when do I see Sami Zayn appearing on the main roster, making his debut on Raw or SmackDown? I said the night after WrestleMania, like Adam Rose, like Bo Dallas, like Rusev, like Paige this year. I think they might start doing that and bringing more talent up right after WrestleMania because if they bring him up any other point before that, he's going to get lost in the shuffle. He's going to be thrown in the fucking dark match battle royal WrestleMania this year which is something I really don't want to see. So with that being said, um, yes, I do see Sami Zayn, maybe not the night after WrestleMania, which would be fucking awesome considering it's a it's a worldwide audience. The Olay chance would be off the charts, but um, I could very well see that being a possibility. And yes, to answer your first question, I do see him winning the NXT Championship at the next NXT Live Special. Next question comes from at Swagzio. His question was, where do you see The Miz by WrestleMania season? I said this earlier, but... Anything can change between now and WrestleMania season. 
Um, so much can freaking change with people coming back, the part-timers, who's champion, who's not champion, who's injured. Roman Reigns, I would never have seen him getting, in, getting injured this past weekend. So like I said, anything can happen, especially with The Miz. He's a utility player. I'm a big Miz, a big Miz fan. But he's a guy that can be used in any role that they have for him, whether it be in a tag team, in the IC title picture, U.S. title picture, a jobber, which he was this past year at WrestleMania. So I could see him doing whatever come WrestleMania season. Um, I can't exactly tell you where or what place on the card he will have at WrestleMania, but it could be very well in an IC title matchup because as of last night at Night of Champions, he is the new Intercontinental Champion. Um, I don't think he'll hold the belt till then. I don't think he'll hold the belt, belt very long. Um, look at his last three Intercontinental title reigns for any indication. But that being said, um, where do I see him in the WrestleMania card? I'm not exactly sure if you're going to be asking. I think someone asked last week if I could ever see him being a world champion again. Probably not, especially with one world title. But um, that being said, I think he'll probably be you know, in the Battle Royal again this year. I think he'll probably be dropping the title in the next couple of months. I don't see him being featured as prominently as he is right now. I love his current gimmick. He's playing it to perfection. I just don't know how long it's going to last with WWE being high on him or officials being high on him and, and being featured as prominently as he is right now. So you'll probably be in the Battle Royal, sad to say, being a Miz fan, but a lot of people may be uh, overjoyed by me saying that. But nevertheless, time will tell. But if I had to take a guess, he'll probably be in the Battle Royal next year at WrestleMania. Next question comes from at Cody Collier 12. His question was, what do you think of Roman Reigns being injured and how do you think it will affect the WWE with the next few weeks? So I already kind of answered this. Um, but yeah, it was pretty shocking to hear Roman Reigns got injured this past weekend. Um, I think it worked out for the best, the whole thing with Dean Ambrose. Someone already asked that question. I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, but it does suck for Roman Reigns considering the fact that he was the top two babyface in the company before he got injured right next to John Cena. So thankfully, Dean Ambrose is back to kind of fill that void for the time being. But what they're going to do for the remainder of 2014 is beyond me because they really need to start growing these fresh talent. And I mentioned in the Facebook blog on my Facebook page earlier today as of this filming that WWE really captured something special right after WrestleMania this year with the rise of Bray Wyatt with Cesaro, Paige, um, Daniel Bryan, The Shield, every all the young talents were rising up, taking over, you know, no pun, no pun intended for NXT talent, but um, they were definitely taking over the WWE, and it really just kind of died down after that. I mean, I'm not going to say the product was bad after WrestleMania because the whole summer I thought was thoroughly entertaining for me anyway. Um, but they really haven't gone back to that, giving me that sense of change in the company, in WWE, on the roster. So that being said, I don't know when they'll be able to capture that again, whether it be anytime soon or what. But um, anyway, I do think the injury of Roman Reigns sucks. I, I think that goes without saying because it kind of leaves that big void atop the roster considering the fact that he was in, featured in, in the main event of SmackDown and Raw for many, many weeks, up to months when he broke away from the Shield. So it definitely does affect the roster, the roster depth. Um, and your the second part of your question, how do I think it will affect the WWE within the next few weeks? Like I said before, I think Dean, Ro Dean Ambrose might be able to fill that void that Roman Reigns had left when he got injured. For the time being, anyway, I don't know how long it's going to last, but we'll have to wait and see. I do think it hurts the product. I know a lot of people aren't very high in Roman Reigns, but like I said before, the guy was a main event player pretty much, with John Cena being the only other top baby face in the company. I'm not going to say it's going to kill the product. Like when CM Punk left, being the CM Punk fan that I am, I'm not going to say that him leaving killed the product. It's up to WWE to just kind of make up for their absence. Because CM Punk's been gone since January. The product was really getting good right before and after WrestleMania. And that really had nothing to do with CM Punk because he wasn't there. It's up to WWE to really start pushing their talent, the younger talent specifically, towards the top of the roster. They started doing that with the Shield members. But you got to keep it consistent and start pushing guys like Cesaro and Bray Wyatt a little bit more. A guy who wasn't even on the Night of Champions card last night. So, that being said, um, yeah, I think it will affect the WWE TV with the next couple of weeks. How they make up for his absence, we'll have to wait and see. Next question comes from, I always botch your name, dude. I'm so, so sorry, but I think it's Hosiah. If I pronounce that correctly, let me know. Underscore Blevins. Um, his question was, what are your thoughts on the Montreal screw job? Did Brett screw Brett? And he also said, I don't know if you already answered, I don't know if you already answered this question or anything like that. I haven't. Um, no one has asked me that question here on the show before. I mean, obviously, it's a pretty general question. But nevertheless, um, back in 1997 with the Montreal Screwjob, looking back on it, especially after the recent special on the WWE Network about it in regards to uh, Brett, the, the whole Monday Night Wars episode they did on it, I thought was very intriguing. They showed some footage of uh, some special they did. I forgot Wrestling with Shadows, I think, I think it was called, 
Uh, my friend John at Hillbot Design on Twitter, he had sent me the link here and told me to go watch it because it was so amazing. He said it was better than anything on the Beyond the Ring section of WWE Network, so I will have to go check it out at some point. But um, it was very, very intriguing. So here's the thing with the Montreal Screwjob, in my opinion anyway, um, and if Brett was in the right – Brett, I think, should, I mean, being the guy, I know he really wanted to keep that title until Monday Night Wars, until Monday Night Raw, I'm sorry, and then vacate it and then go to WCW, but here's the thing, being a business guy, and it wasn't anything personal on Mr. McMahon's behalf, it was, I mean, the, the way they handled it with the screw job and whatnot was not right, but they had to do what they had to do to take the title off of Brett Hart, because he wouldn't have vacated him himself, I mean, I guess the original plan was to do a DQ finish or something screwy, and then, like I said before, vacate the title the next night on Raw. But they really couldn't have trusted Bret Hart. I know that they re they knew, realized that he was very angry with WWE. He did not want to be there anymore. He was ready to go to WCW. He was very loyal. But even as loyal as Bret Hart was to the WWF, they couldn't have trusted him. It wasn't really his fault. It was people like Medusa tossing the women's head on the trash and all that kind of stuff happening. So they really couldn't have trusted Bret Hart to do the right thing, show up and Raw and vacate the title. They expected him to show up on Nitro with that championship and do the same thing that Medusa did and toss it right in the trash. How would that have made WWF look? So I can definitely understand where Vince is coming from in doing what he did. I don't I, – I didn't agree with the approach that he took in doing it. But the business mindset, you got to do what's best for business, as the authority always says. And that's what was best for business. You take the title off of Bret Hart in Survivor Series. I know of all people who didn't want to drop it to Shawn Michaels. They were not on the best of terms at the time. Of, of course, I think that goes without saying, but – you got to agree with the mindset that Vince had at the time that they couldn't have trusted Brett to show up on Raw and do the right thing because it wasn't his fault. It wasn't their lack of trust in Brett. It was just more so the fact that history had shown that anyone that had jumped ship from WWF to WCW really didn't give a shit. They were more inclined on hurting WWE than going out um, you know, with a final bow or anything like that, I guess you could say. So those are my thoughts on the Montreal Screwjob. Did Brett screw Brett? Vince screwed Brett with the whole you know Montreal Screwjob. I could definitely see that. Brett, in a way... It wasn't entirely his fault, but he had to see that he should have dropped the title at Survivor Series as the post of Monday Night Raw because he had to see where Vince was coming from with all what other past talent had done, and he should have done the right thing. He didn't. Vince had to take it into his own hands. I wouldn't say that Brett screwed Brett, but it was kind of the wrong choice to make on both ends. Both guys are at fault in that situation, in my opinion, anyway. Next question, or his second question was, I know it's early, but what do you project the card for Hell in a Cell to be or to look like? Um, I look at, I, I see it looking like a lot of rematches from Night of Champions. I started writing down the matches when you asked me that question of matches that I could see at Hell in a Cell, and most of them are rematches from Night of Champions. Easily the top two, I think, are pretty much, not confirmed, but I mean, it's looking like they are going to happen. Cena Lesnar inside the cell, which makes sense. I mean, it's a long-ass feud they've been doing out since 2012, so it makes sense to culminate it, to blow it off in the, in the, in the Hell in a Cell, which we often complain about. I complained about it last week, how they do Hell in a Cell matches that don't really call for the Hell in a Cell stipulation. This one does. I mean, I'm, I know we're not going to see blood. We might not. I mean, Brock Lesnar's involved, so you never know. Um, but that being said, I think it is a perfect way to blow off the Cena and Lesnar feud. Even though I did want it to end last night in Night of Champions, I can see why they're doing it. So Cena and Lesnar for the title inside the cell. Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, I mean, that's a feud I could see going on for years on end. But to add another chapter in this feud, I mean, to blow it off for the time being, I could see them facing off in Hell in a Cell in a couple of weeks. Other matches on the card, they might do a rematch of the IC title. I don't know how long you can drag that out for, considering the fact that he's been going on since Battleground. Um, maybe another Page and AJ match, since AJ just won the Divas Championship. Another tag team title matchup. Anything's really in the cards right now with Stardust and Goldust, the Usos, that team, title, that, that tag team title situation. So I just see a lot of rematches from Night of Champions taking place at Hell in a Cell, since maybe they start off with a few new feuds tonight. I mean, I hope so. I'm, I, like I said before, I think we are in desperate need of a shake-up right now in the WWE. But um, as it stands right now, I see Hell in a Cell being the kind of close of one chapter and the next night's Raw being the start of another. So look at Hell in a Cell. Uh, look for Hell in a Cell to be a show of many rematches. Um, next question, and the final question, comes from at we Gaza 47 sent in the question right before I started filming this, so great timing. This question was, do you think Dean Ambrose would have returned last night at Night of Champions if Roman Reigns did not get injured? Probably not. They were probably banking on him, Dean Ambrose, that is coming back at Monday Night Raw, because I know he was advertised for Raw tonight. So, I mean, it was pretty obvious from the moment that Dean Ambrose left. Um, everyone knew that filming had wrapped up this weekend on Saturday, so it was perfect timing. Um, so, and I actually, I thought it worked out for the benefit. I thought it worked out very, very, very well. Um, not that I want to see Roman Reigns injured or anything, but I think 
They already gave away Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns last week on Raw, so I really had no incentive. I really had no desire to see the rematch last night. So to have Seth Rollins issue an open challenge, have Dean Ambrose come back and accept, engage in a very hot brawl, I thought was very well done, the best book thing they could have done with this angle. So had Reigns not gotten injured, they probably would have had the match last night. Roman Reigns probably would have gone over in the same fashion he did on Raw. I would have yawned because it would have been the same match that we saw six days prior. But um, then you could have expected Dean Ambrose to come back the next night. And maybe we could have gotten a triple threat shield feud. Maybe we'd get that next year. I would have rather seen that go down um, around WrestleMania season or maybe next year's SummerSlam or something. I know that's kind of a little far down the line. That's about a year from now. But um, it would have been better than rushing through it right now as we approach the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. So that's going to do it for this week's questions. Always appreciate you guys sending in the questions. If you want to send in um, a question for me to answer, you can tweet me on Twitter at WrestleRant with the hashtag AskGSM. Find me on Facebook, like the official page at GSM Matthews, and leave a comment on the wall. Or you can leave a comment on the video, and it will be included in next week's video, um, in next week's edition of hashtag AskGSM. So that being said, guys, always appreciate you guys supporting the show. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be back next week with another edition of hashtag AskGSM. I'm Graham Jason Matthews, and I'll catch you guys then.